Hi everyone! This is the second part of the tutorial on how to create a library of useful functions for shaders in Godot. If you haven't seen the previous part, I highly recommend watching it first. The link is provided in the description of this video. In this part, we will add functions for rendering various types of simple objects that we can use to bring our shaders to life and make them more interesting. We'll start with a simple circle. The easiest way to create a circle shape in a shader is to use the length function, which returns the distance of a specific pixel from the origin. Since the origin uh, with coordinate 0, 0 is usually at the top left corner, we will move it to the center of our viewport for better visibility. Let's prepare the shader shapes GT shader and add it to a newly created scene shapes TSCM with a child node color act. So I will start with a scene, right click, create new scene, uh, and it should be node 2D. So let's call it shapes, TSCN. Okay, right click a child node color rect. Very well. I think we can scale it up a little bit so it would be better visible. Let's find it here in layout. Uh, transform scale 20 by 20. Okay, maybe it's too much. 10 by 10. Okay, 100%. Great. And of course, we need to uh, create the material, shader material as usual. Click and add a new shader, which we will call uh, shapes GD shader and put it to the shaders folder create let's click it here and it's canvas item which is correct so let's do what we just told a while ago start with uh, moving the origin to the center of the viewport so we will define back uv is uv and subtract 0.5 because as we know 0, 0 is over there 1 1 is here so if we subtract half we'll just get exactly to the center as the new 0, 0 and minus uh, 0.5 minus 0.5 would be here 0 0.5 0 0.5 there great and we need to define a color of the particle pixel uh, like 3 color would start at 0 which is black 0, 0, 0. Here we will add the shape functions and finally let's assign the result to color. Uh, I mean uh, vector 4 of course with uh, color and alpha as fully opaque. Everything should be black now. It is. Great. So we will include the library we created last time with the include directive. Include this one and let's save that. And we will add a new function called draw circle. I will open the library here. Let's enlarge it and code. Float draw circle. And it would have two parameters, vector 2, uv, uh, to specify coordinates of the center of the circle. And of course, we need to define the size of the circle, the diameter. OK, and how we can implement that? So as I said, we will use the function length. So float this for distance is length of the uv. UV and uh, we would return simply the distance divided by the size. But of course, um, just to make sure that the final color won't fall outside the range 0 to 1, it's always a good idea to clamp it. So clamp the result, 
with the following boundaries 0 and 1 that's it cool and to use this function in our shader I will click back and just show the shader again and we will simply add it to our black color color plus equals draw circle as you can see the uh, comb completion automatically offer this function because we are including the library and let's put it to uv coordinates and start with the size one okay very well something circular is definitely there but it would be probably it would probably be better to generate a white circle on a black background so in the library we will simply invert the result and subtract it from one one minus this yeah that's better okay by the way uh, the reason we are clumping that is also that it helps us avoid issues with overlapping shapes when we add more circles or more shapes to the same uh, viewport because these values when the uh, formulas get more complicated could drop too low into the negative range we would disrupt the pixel values around the respective shape so perhaps the circle is too large i guess and uh, we might want to move it to a different position let's try making this change so change the size to 0.1 uh no this is alpha value sorry this change this to 0.1 all right and what if we add 0.3 to uv it should move to the top left yes perfect but what if we wanted sharp edges for this circle one option would be to apply the step function as we've done in some of the previous videos however we have a better option that gives us more flexibility in setting parameters we will add an edge parameter to the function draw circle and we'll use it to divide the result before applying the clamp function we can set it to a low value for example 0.01 let's do it so new parameter float edge and as I said by this edge we will uh, divide this so we need to first uh, enclose the subtraction to brackets and divide by edge and nothing is happening of course because the original function doesn't use the third parameter yet we need to add it and I said 0 0.1 let's wait for it this is perfect and of course since we are using division here uh, with a value that could approach zero it would be safer to build a minimum value into the function below which the edge won't drop we can do it like uh, this for example just add a failsafe edge is equals to max edge and something very low one uh, to the power of minus eight yeah this is great so now even if i will add the edge zero it will still work because automatically the minimum value was used uh, this one very well so having a circle was quite straightforward generating a regular polygon around such a circle will be a bit more challenging in our library we will prepare a function called draw polygon with one additional parameter because we need to specify the number of sides so once again i will expand this and let's add a function draw polygon we can start with uh, copying and pasting this one just rename it to draw polygon and as i said there would be a new parameter float sides all right and i will add one more thing this line 
float limit is 1. Uh, I will introduce it into the algorithm and explain it just in a while and multiply the distance by this limit. Uh, this is exactly what we will use to convert our circle into a polygon. So currently, because it's set to 1, it doesn't change anything and the result is still a circle. Uh, this time, let's leave it in the, uh, at the origin. Let's switch here and I will add this incomplete uh, polygon. Color plus draw polygon with parameter UV, stay in the center. Now sides, let's use five to create a pentagon. Uh, five size and let's start with a bigger edge one. Okay, we should see a circle. Yeah, we can see a circle. Okay, so how can we apply the limits to just flatten this, uh, these edges? We'll be working with polar coordinates again, which we explained and used in the first part of this mini tutorial. Let's start with the angle that the vector of a specific pixel forms with the axis from which angles are calculated. So I will switch back to the function draw polygon and let's do it here uh, float angle is as we know there is a function atom to convert from the cartesian to polar coordinates uv x uv y all right next we'll need the size of the angle between the radii leading to two edges and vertices which we'll assign to the variable slice, as the sliced portion indeed resembles a slice. So I will add this line, float slice is tau, as we know it's a double of pi, and in radians it means the full circle, 360 degrees, divided by uh, sides. And finally, we will use all this in the formula that, much like the chessboard pattern from the previous video, relies on the floor function, which truncates the fractional part of a number and returns an integer. I'll also add a variable called corner, and the purpose of which we'll see in a moment. For now, I'll set it to 1. So, the final uh, new variable is corner. As I said, we will use one for now, and now we can implement the limit. And the formula is this floor corner plus angle divided by slice. And this would be multiplied by slice. And finally, let's subtract the angle. Okay, now we have a shape that somewhat resembles something closer to a pentagon, at least in terms of the number of repeating objects. However, uh, we don't want these lines to extend infinitely, so we'll apply our favorite trigonometric functions to appropriately limit their reach. The cosine function seems most suitable for this purpose. Let's add cosine here. And this, the whole formula would be an argument. Great! Even such a little star can be a nice addition to our scene, especially if we rotate it, which we can try right away uh, using time. So let's temporarily change this angle, just add time and it should start rotating faster, faster, multiply by 10. Yeah, that's something. Okay, we are not done yet, so let's remove time and continue. 
safe. Uh, now it's time for the variable corner, this one, which we can use to control the length and shape of the star's tips. We'll see that close, the closer we get to the value uh, 0 0.5, the closer we come to creating a perfect pentagon. Let's try something. Uh, point 8. It should be shorter. Yeah, and when we finally get to 0.5, voila, we reach our goal. If we wanted a full pentagon, we'll change the edge value to 0. So let's get back to the shapes function and do this. 0. Is it? Yeah, nice. So that's it. We can verify that the function produces the correct result for a different number of sides, like triangle. Let's change it to 3. Or square. Uh, pentagon we already used. Hexagon. Heptagon. Octagon. And so on. Let's get back to 5. Of course, uh, we don't have to settle for such wide shapes. If we want, for example, a pentagon with a purple gradient, we'll return the edge value to 1 and multiply the result by a color vector, uh, where it is here. So this is a vector 3, and we can multiply that by another vector 3, and with the purple right, so it would be red and uh, green. And, uh, no, no, no. Blue, right? Red and blue. So let's do this and wait for it. This uh, is nice. <laughs> this in conjunction with the palette we demonstrated earlier, like this one. And with time-based changes in shapes and other parameters can yield some very interesting results. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration and I was able to contribute to expanding the knowledge of shaders, which can greatly enhance the visuals in our games. Have a great day and see you in the next video.